Hey y'all, I'm back with another video. Married at First Sight, Season 10, Episode 7, I believe. Okay, so this video is not going to really be much again. This episode was pretty much broken up into like two sections. Them moving in with each other, looking at each other's places, then having a therapy session with Pastor Kyle. So we're going to go through each couple, kind of like I normally do. Uh, again, we're going to go from least that happened to the most that happened. So, I guess we'll start off with, as usual, Jess and Austin, uh, my fave. And, um, let's see here. So, they started off. So, everybody pretty much is going to be living in the same apartment. It's going to be a neutral place. Um, yeah, it's, everybody's going to be living pretty much in the same complex. So, everybody's place is pretty nice. Um, everybody has a nice view. Um, so they moved in with each other, they were cool, they're still getting along pretty good. Um, when Jess went, to, Jess went to Austin's house, Austin is really, really like a minimalist, he doesn't have a lot. Jess, on the other hand, she's like a hoarder, she has a shit load of stuff. I won't say a hoarder, but she just has a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, that's them. And then they met with Pastor Kyle, and Pastor Kyle's whole thing with Jess and Austin is like, you guys are getting along so well right now. And I want y'all to know that the honeymoon phase, so yeah, the honeymoon phase is not going to last, which they both said they understand. Um, the only problem, I guess, somewhat that was brought up is the fact that um, Jess makes way more than Austin does. Um, but she says she's cool with that, you know, as long as he's trying to make more money, she's good. So that's Jess and Austin. Then we got... Hmm. I miss. I know I'm missing somebody here, y'all. Oh, okay. Never mind. I got it. So then we're gonna do Katie and Derek. Now they had a little bit of stuff going on. Um, actually, yeah. But we're gonna do Danny and Derek because I Katie and Derek because I already said it. Katie and Derek. They went to each other places. Everything was cool. Um, let's get to the therapy session because that's all that really matter with them. So, with the therapy session, remember how I told y'all how I felt like the whole situation with the, um, with the, um, ex-boyfriend or the other boy was going to pop up and bite her in the ass, so, um, Kyle, Pastor Kyle was pretty much trying to talk to them and say, like, like, what's going on with y'all? Because even when they first came home, you could see that, like, the sparks between them is kind of like fading out they're not as excited around each other as they used to be and so pastor carl's trying to get to the deeper rooted rooted it's like what's going on and so it pretty much comes out of comes up about the fact that you know she has feelings for somebody still well she says she doesn't have feelings for them but like she still thinks about them i forgot exactly how she phrased it but pastor carl was saying point is you got some unresolved feelings for this person that you have that about that person and because of that it's hindering you from being able to be any deeper in this relationship which she agreed to and um of course that's gonna bother um Derek, rightfully so because you know he said i came in here with a blank slate i didn't come in here with nobody on my mind so that kind of messes with me but you know she tried to reassure him um, you know, she did explain that she didn't really have much time, you know, to heal from it. And, you know, that she doesn't have any contact with him. They don't even follow each other. So, he said, alright, he's gonna figure it out. But that's probably always gonna be on the back of his mind for real. I told you that was gonna come back, bro. I told you. I told you. And so then, who else we gonna next? Who we gonna next? Who we gonna next? We gonna do Mike and Mika. So, we got Mike and Mika. Mike and Mika, they get into their place for the very first time, oh, in a long time very few times we see these two are laughing they're talking and they're laughing with one another they're conversing i love them too I, I told i love them two together i really really do i think they can make it work they end up having a, a therapy session with um uh pastor kyle um he makes way more money than her she's happy with that girl i will be too um and pretty much the whole oh my gosh the whole thing about what he said about whether or not about her having sex with him on a honeymoon or whether or not he said it in the back and forth i get what mika is saying about like why can't you just tell the truth but mike is standing in his truth that that's not what he said i don't know who to believe but to be quite honest i don't care because at this point it's a mute point we are past the honeymoon and he is still with you girl you ain't give him nothing so 
I get why that would be an issue, but at the same time, like, let's move on. And that's why Pastor Carl was like, I'm sorry I even brought it up, because y'all was in a good space. So, you know, Mike kind of had a breakdown, you know, saying how he didn't want to fail. Now, some people were saying on Twitter uh, that they thought he did that because he was trying to um, deflect from what he said. I could see that. I could see that. But also, Mike seems like a very emotional guy, so I could see why he was cool and cry. But, you know, Mika said that she appreciated him showing her that side and so um yeah so that was Mike and Mika then we have Brandon no yeah Brandon and Taylor fuck it Brandon and Taylor (sighs) Taylor comes home by herself Brandon apparently left straight after from once they got to the airport because he wanted to be in his little itty bitty feelings. But Taylor decided that she was still going to go back to the place and she was going to try to figure it out. I mean, you know, sit there and I won't say wait for him, but you know, she's going to be there because she's in the process. Taylor, you're a, you're a better woman than me. Pastor Kyle comes over the next day and whatever, and then she's telling him everything that happened. So what we didn't know was that He was cursing everybody out the whole bus ride. Not even a little bit, the whole bus ride. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. See, you did, Brandon, you did it around around the right ones. Because, see, if you was on a bus full of any, any, any other men, especially with their wives there or their girls there, and you going off like that, cursing and saying, fuck all y'all, you would have got thrown off that bus. That's exactly what would have happened. Absolutely. So then, you know, um, Pastor Kyle was, you know, just taken aback because he was like, what the hell? Like, what's going on? So in the middle of them talking, Brandon comes in or whatever with some flowers for Taylor and, oh, hi, and da 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 And so Pastor Kyle's like, we need to have a talk. So he's like, sure, 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 sure. So here's the thing. Brandon tried to, Brandon said that. The reason he got mad is because he felt like production was trying to play him. This is what I didn't understand. I listened to everything he said and I ran it back. He never said how production was playing him. I need him to give me specifics on what does he mean production was playing him. In what sense? Like, give me an example, Brandon. You said, oh, they were trying to make me look bad. In what sense you made your own self look bad? In my opinion, in my opinion, the way you acted, you threw a whole diva fit. So I want you to explain to me what does that mean? How did production make you try to make you look bad? But then take that aside. He said, "Oh well, uh, I got mad at um, Taylor because she said." Um, I don't want to be married to anybody who's going to act like this or who's going to be an asshole and this is that and third. And I'm thinking, oh, you need to be on my side. See, you're one of those people who think that just because I'm your friend or I'm your family or I'm your wife that I got to agree with everything you say. No, the fuck I don't. That's why Pastor Carl was like, at the end of the day, like, it's not about you. It's not about Team Brandon. Like, what are you talking about? She doesn't have to agree with everything that you do. Your wife in particular is supposed to be able to call you out on your bullshit. And that's what Taylor was doing. You was acting like an asshole. Period. So she, after, um, because like I said, she he sent um, Taylor out because he was talking to Brandon by himself. Then Taylor come back in or whatever and he apologizes again. But my thing is, did he ever apologize to production? Because he needed to apologize to uh, Miss Brandy, the lady in production, because that shit was disrespectful. Disrespectful. Out of pocket. Out of fucking pocket. But he said he's going to move in and all this other stuff and I was just so tired of him talking about how he wants to be to himself and, oh my gosh, I'm not used to all of this. When you signed up for a reality show, I'm going to keep saying that you signed up for a reality show. I don't give a fuck. (sighs) Finally, we get to Zach and Mindy. Mindy also moves in by herself. And she says that Zach told her pretty much that he doesn't feel like this is the right and that it's the right time and that he's feel comfortable enough to move in with her. So she moves in anyway because she's committed to the process. And so then we switch over to Zach. And again, Zach is just talking in circles and circles, don't really understand what he's saying. He's saying that he don't want to move in with her because it wouldn't be the natural thing to do. You're on married at first sight. What are you talking about? 
everything that Zach is saying would make sense if this was a regular, regular, schmegular relationship that we're dealing with. This is married at first sight. What do you mean it doesn't make any sense? So it feels comfortable to marry the girl at first sight, but not to move in with her. To stay a whole week with her in Panama, but then not to move in with her. It doesn't make any sense. Zach talks in fucking circles. So then, uh... Pastor called me to up with Mindy, and pretty much he tells, after hearing everything, he tells Mindy the facts, which is, Mindy, this has nothing to do with you. Girl, you're doing everything that it is that you're supposed to be doing. Talks to Zach by himself, and that whole conversation, again, Zach was just talking in circles, and you could even tell Pastor Paul was like, he's not making any sense. This is, this, this is pretty much what I got, trying to seep through all of the bullshit of Zach. This is what it is. Zach is not physically attracted to Mindy. Period. He's not. But he's trying to cloud it in this in the fact of saying they don't have any chemistry with each other. And I'm gonna tell you how I know. Because he kept saying this is what he said. He was he kept talking about some oh well you know there's no attraction there. There's no attraction. And what he said was and you know chemistry, you know, for for me to build on to that no sorry, hold on. He said damn I had it in my notes. He said There is, like, really no chemistry between me and her. And, you know, chemistry goes into, you know, attraction and stuff like that. You know, and finding somebody. So, he caught himself. But that's what it is. He's trying to hide the fact of, oh, there's no chemistry between us. To say that he's clouding that in the fact that he does not find her attractive. But that's just what it is. That's just what it is. Because my thing is, if it really was just chemistry and not her physical, like, you know, features or anything you would just say i don't feel like there's any chemistry we're not necessarily clicking you wouldn't keep saying attraction because you're talking about the way it is that she looks and pastor kyle said something that's so true and i believe it he said did you have a like a preconceived notion of what mindy was supposed to be and look like and that's just not what happened oh no 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 that's not what it is that's exactly what it is that's exactly what it is you thought that you was coming on some tv show and so that you would get probably some blonde girl with some big boobs or some shit like that and that's what you would get no and like pastor I said Mindy is beautiful so I don't know what the hell is wrong with you Zach and Pastor Kyle asked him because pretty much I think Pastor Kyle sees through the bullshit because he kept saying we need people who are here for the right reasons and he asked Zach the first time so do you are you here for the marriage here goes Zach going on the whole world when the shit we don't know what the fuck you're talking about again Pastor Kyle do you want to do this yes or no yes and then he just kind of looks at him and then he kind of like laughs a little bit like kind of smirks and it's like pastor Kyle could see through it you are here to be on tv you do not want to be in a marriage with that girl then they go and they sit down and they talk and again he's talking in fucking circles and not making any damn sense but they walk out both saying that they're gonna try to make it work Zach is here just for tv just for tv that's all it is. He's here for TV. And when when they was talking in, in the um, Mindy, Zach, and Pastor Kyle, when they was talking, and uh, Pastor Kyle was asking him, like, why he didn't move in. And he's like, oh, well, I just don't feel like it would be right. You know, we just spent all of this time together and all of this other stuff. And I don't want to have to be in the same space. Pastor Kyle said, there's two bedrooms in here. And he got real quiet. He said, I mean, but this ain't roommates at first sight. He said, exactly, it's married at first. Married people live together. That's why I say Zach is on this show to get the exposure. He does not really want to be in this marriage. He's full of shit, and I'm done, and I'm over it. (sighs) This episode, it was okay. I'm going to give it, like, a C. It wasn't really that good, for real. But we'll get into it next week, see what happens. It looks like Taylor's family going to clean Brandon right on the fuck up, gather him. So I'm here for it. I'm not trying to know what y'all think about that.